Hi, everyone, and welcome to AB Conversations, where we will help you CFP your way out of it, a podcast where you get into the minds of a couple certified financial planners on how we think and feel about everyday financial planning questions and what should really matter most to you. A healthier financial life starts now. Good afternoon, Adam. Thank you for joining me today. Um, A rather... People are going to read the title of the podcast, a rather yeah. fluid situation we're dealing with. And while you and I both love to be a little upbeat and talk about fun financial planning things, <laughs> yeah, um, this is not going to be one of those podcasts. This is not that. So brief intro. Um, certainly, yeah. we want to put this out there as people are dealing with, I'm sure, um, different layers of anxiety with uh, market volatility, but also just this care for humanity. Um, We are far from experts on Russia and Ukraine, Um, and we certainly would guess that people have varying degrees of kind of understanding of what's going on and different headlines. Yeah, Um, yeah. But we do want to try to be experts on, you know, client communications and financial planning. So Mm -hmm. let's talk about it today. Let's talk about what this major world event is kind of doing um, in the world of investments and financial planning and uh, hope it's helpful for people. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll just start with a recap of where we're at currently today. Today that we're recording is Thursday, the look at the calendar, the 24th. So yes. as for, for us here in the States, it was overnight, at least that I saw notifications um, that the, the invasion uh, was underway. So as of this recording that has happened, Russia has invaded different parts of, of Ukraine then it was the yeah. meeting of, of world leaders, which I guess is probably still occurring. We just saw some headlines. Um, you know, there's more sanctions that are going to be coming um, on Russia, but the, those details have not yet made it to, to our eyes and ears. Um, but I'm sure there, there will be a lot of back and forth over the coming yeah. days and weeks. Um, and as most people are probably seeing again, not just limited to today in real time, but I'm sure over the next, again, days, weeks, months, whatever this turns into the, the, the length of this market uncertainty, volatility is ratcheted up a notch, which already felt like through the first seven or eight weeks of the year, there was certainly much more volatility than we've experienced the last few years. And now you throw this powder, 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 powder keg on top of it. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it certainly feels um, like a, a pretty, pretty big market moving event in the short term. Yeah. So broadly, I think our job now is to start to digest some of that for our yeah. clients. Yeah. And when, quest- when questions come in, be able to, to speak directly to um, what do we think this means? And that's always going to be the question. So mm-hmm. I think for, for us today, um, you and I are both trying to be very well read on this. And yeah. um, we probably have to give some historical context because I know mm-hmm. that's, how we, that's how we choose to invest with our clients through right. that lens. Um, we can certainly talk about some more shorter term things that we think may happen, um, mm-hmm. but always, always with an eye to the future then on Okay, what's the moral of the story? What do we want people to take away um, yeah. from this podcast? Um, because, look, this is a hard one. Because when we're talking about human lives, it's very different than you know us talking about inflation and things that yeah. are, you know, feel now so trivial to um, yeah. a, a really big geopolitical event. But yeah, let's let's lean on history a little bit here. Um, I know that we can talk a little bit to prior wars, military Mm -hmm. events, um, let's just kind of categorize them as market moving things. Um, Because I know we've learned a lot from those in the last 80, 90 years of data we can kind of draw from. Yeah, it was it was interesting to kind of see. uh, So we're with LPL and they they put out a, a summary this morning, just kind of giving some of that historical context. And you look at that list of market driving headlines, especially like these types of conflicts and, and past wars. And it really was kind of eye-opening to kind of look at it through yeah. that lens. You know, how, how did the market respond to Vietnam? How did it respond to the Iraq war? How did it respond to Afghanistan? 
um, most recently. And just you, you can kind of put yourself back in those shoes at that time. Um, and I'm sure it, it felt way different in the moment, but we have the, we, we have the power of hindsight going back and knowing that historically the market has always recovered. It's just a matter yeah. of how long has it taken? Um, and that, so our outlook in that sense is no different. Um, right. In, in this situation, w the market will recover. It's just a matter of how prolonged is this going to be? What other, uh, I guess, dominoes are yet to fall as part of this. But historically speaking, geopolitical events like this have averaged 5% or so drawdowns. Mm -hmm. And they've lasted three to four weeks. And then that recovery is typically, again, we're just talking averages, is roughly two months. So another four to eight weeks. So in the grand scheme of things, relatively short-lived. We don't know if that's going to be the case this time around, but right, historically speaking, we, we expect to get to the other side of this at some point. Yeah. And I think we share that to share that that has kind of given us, I would hope, a little bit of reprieve with this. You know, you feel a little bit better because it never it never feels worse than being like right in the moment. And I, I, oh, I yeah. like most recently for me, I just go back to the way that I felt going to bed every day, you know, as the markets drop in COVID-19 yeah. and waking yeah. up in the morning and just you're, you're looking at all this turmoil in the market. It never right. feels worse than that. And, you know, you look three months out, where was the market? You look six months, nine months. So, we, you yeah. know, this is war and it's so much more of a serious feeling for me, but yeah history does show that if you if you can then look back a month later three months later and that's our job our job right now is to think what does this mean for our clients six 12 months from now right. um and as you shared with the statistics the market typically does digest that and recorrect itself pretty quickly well so and and what does that call yeah. for it calls for just a little patience right now which is yeah. hard yes it, it, that it absolutely is and i, I was going to say it's we've often seen this happen and it's, it's, it's almost par for the course, the way that the market digests that information and that it often overreacts to both degrees, right? Not only just volatility to the downside, but then oftentimes we see that exuberance on the upside may not necessarily be fully warranted at times either. So it is that pendulum swinging um, a little bit too far in either direction is a natural consequence of investing in, in the stock and bond markets. So we're hoping, yeah. at least in, in my thought, that, that we're in that scenario here where it's, it's reacting initially, right, to, to just uncertainty. And, and we've talked about this in other podcasts. The stock markets hate the idea of any type of uncertainty. Um, and especially when you're talking about now a geopolitical event and, and conflict uh, between yeah. countries, that uncertainty is, is huge. So the fact that the markets are reacting the way that they are in the short term is not necessarily surprising. Um, but it's, right. it, it, so, yeah, I guess it, it's it's seeing how it plays out over the short term. And I guess, again, we're looking through the lens of not necessarily short term traders, but we're looking at it as long term investors. And really, has our outlook necessarily shifted? The answer is no. It just puts right. us in a little bit deeper of a hole to kind of start this year out um, to get to where where we think the markets are going to be at the end of the year not necessarily the end of next week. And I, I think the, um, the contrarian can easily say, yeah, but this time may be different, right? We have right. no idea if this becomes a bigger, larger conflict. And we're gonna hopefully say things today that are gonna ring true next week if this invasion <laughs> it, you know, expands itself beyond Ukraine, who knows? Yeah, um, right. But I think it is the important context to say how, how we will need to react to this hopefully is no different than any other what feels like major event right if there was inaction during a COVID 19 time for, right. for some traders they right. were rewarded for just being patient um, and we will hope hope this is a similar situation um yes. but let me i know that you and i had a brief conversation on this this morning and i think it's important context too maybe more specific to russia is to think mm -hmm. back to the the last time there there felt like there was, uh, you know, war conflict did mm -hmm. involve Russia in 2014, yeah. and yeah. I think the context of what happened since then 
um, is important for why we think this may not be a, a major market mover. Can I throw okay. that to you to kind of talk about the annexation of Crimea? Cri Crimea. Crimea, yeah, yeah. And I, 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 again, we were talking about this earlier and, and I, <laughs> I love playing Jeopardy. I love trivia. But I never in a million years would have been able to guess the year in which that occurred. That's just the, the recency bias in my head. And thinking that that was 2014, I, I, I thought it was way more recent than that. So yeah. seeing that as kind of the marker, and here we are, whatever that is, seven and a half, eight years later, um, was certainly a shock to me. But yes, there was certainly volatility um, around that time. Clearly, it was, it was just the uncertainty of what was going to happen. Um, it was a lot of economic sanctions again on, on yeah. Russia. Um, and I, I, we should say that there's, there's different lenses to view this through. Clearly we're coming at it from the eyes of, you know, US investors and the, the not just the US economy, but you know, our democracy. Europe is, has way closer ties to Europe, uh, to Russia, just geographically. Right. And they rely on Russia a lot more for their energy consumption so there is potential for more connection and more fallout from that sense. Um, that's fair. That's absolutely I, I, fair. I had I, I had another thought there, and it just it just poof it left. Well, then I'll I'll pick it up from there. the 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 point of 2014 is in a post Cold War economy. You know, the idea of being economically integrated was clearly to everyone's advantage. That you know, there would be some peace there, but 2014 already showed with the same Russian leadership that being that integrated was maybe not the way to go with a country like this. And yes. it's, we're, we're now reading these reports that right. other economies, other countries have really wound back, you know, some of that integrated currency, integrated reserves yes. and trade yes. um, where what Russia is doing today and sanctions that may go against, it may not affect, there may not be a lot of domino economically to other places other than, of course, this energy consumption. Yes. So yes, that, that is exactly where, where my mind was headed. And then it got veered off course. Yes, it's the, the financial ties, the banking ties, right? One, one bank dealing with another bank across Europe. That, that has diminished greatly since right. 2014, when that, that did kind of rear its ugly head, because there, there was so much interconnectedness. Um, so yes, we're now the majority of that um, fallout will be coming, I think, from, from the energy side of things, just because Europe relies on Russia for a, a fair amount of natural gas and, and oil imports. Um, so I, I think that can tie back to, um, again, where do we stand today and what can this mean to uh, U.S. investors? Yeah, it really, it really does mean that something like this, we don't anticipate putting us into some sort of recessionary period. Um, right. And, and we'd have to come at it from the backdrop that corporate earnings, I mean, here we are almost the end of February, everybody's yeah. all but reported, corporate earnings were very strong again. You know, we have mm -hmm. proven time and time again, coming out of COVID, um, that corporations have been able to adapt. And if we don't have strong economic ties to this conflict, then the, the, I hope the historical context of the ability for the market return rings true this time around again. Yeah, yes. And, and I'll, I, we think a lot of this kind of knee jerk volatility um, is exactly that it's, it's just complete risk off. It's, it's yeah. potentially throwing out the baby with the bathwater, right, that it, it doesn't matter <laughs> if it's a if it's a good stock or a bad stock, if it's a stock and, and you're fearful of what could potentially happen. You're, you're selling that stock regardless, because you want to go somewhere safer. Um, and that's often what happens in these very short periods of time where just that uncertainty really is kind of taking the forefront, um, where it's just, at, to some degree, it's the indiscriminate selling across the board. It doesn't matter what you own. It's not cash and it's not guaranteed. Then it's, it's, it's subject to, to that volatility. Yeah. And I know we promised not to go too granular, so I'm going <laughs> to say this and, and hopefully not take it too much further, but it, yeah. it does just mean just as we've been, you're favoring U.S. stocks over European stocks, right? You know, it, it may mean that um, the growth stocks that have really been beaten up by potential interest rate increases, right? 
Right. Um, maybe it's growth over value now. Again, I don't want to get too granular, but yeah. these still feel like tweaks. If people really are feeling like they have to do something, they're not feeling like wholesale moves. Not for us. Yeah. Right. Right. And so that I'll I'll go back to kind of I think what I, I said earlier. Maybe maybe we just talked about it earlier. It's the the sh there there are certainly opportunities for those short term traders in environments like this. But that long term view, and especially for for us and our clients coming coming into this event, we've had a pretty neutral um, approach to a, not not just the, our stock stock allocation, but our stock to bond allocation was was fairly neutral as well. So right. it it does. We we talked about this. It 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 feels weird to to have these um, kind of market moving environments and just these headlines and and the volatility that comes with it. And to go through all of this conversation, go through all of these different things happening, and at the end of the day, you say, "Well, I'm still. What what would I change? What what would we do at this point? Would feel like you're making a bet one way or the other, um, and then that just philosophically is not yep. <laughs> how we go about things. You know, we will certainly make tweaks here or there, um, but yeah, ma making a wholesale change at this point just in in our eyes doesn't feel like like the prudent thing and disclaimer right uh of course maybe maybe subject that will change. change subject to yeah. change but yeah we we are certainly following not only the historical context but all of the research and and the information that we get um from all our different investment partners um it's giving us i think a little bit of comfort to kind of just recognize that this is not a wonderful thing for the world right now right um, but does this become a lot of negative? How how wide does that web get? Does that have a lot of negative dominoes into financial markets? Um, yeah. Maybe not. And maybe that's just understanding that while Russia is huge, and of course mm -hmm. there is leadership there that I do not think feels like it's completely sane and able to be rationalized. <laughs> they're uh -huh. they're the uh, the eleventh largest when it comes to GDP. You know they're not. Okay. I don't know. I would have guessed they were maybe higher, um, right? But right, it, it just doesn't. It doesn't put them in a spot. I think of having this major impact for the rest of the world. Yeah, and it, it does. I mean, it does speak to just kind of the 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 inputs that that drive the market in in short term bursts. I mean, that, it it feels like somewhat of a novelty to feel like COVID has it. It has taken a back seat to pretty yeah. much everything else right now. Even even before the the most this this specific Russia Ukraine deal, it was inflation. It was uh, Fed interest rates. It's... Yeah, well, yes, it, it, yes. It was what what is the Federal Reserve going to do? What what's inflation going to look like moving forward? Is the supply chain going to work itself out? And just that kind of took over as the primary driver of, of market volatility and now you again you throw on throw on top of that a geopolitical event and it it does feel strange that kind of COVID is not a part of this conversation really in any way shape or form which i should feel good but it clearly doesn't for other reasons yeah then i guess you brought up we're talking about the Fed here a little bit. I guess that's the only thing that I would say I'm I'm kind of interested in the short term to see how it really shakes out because that is some of the headline and maybe that's even some of the trading that's going on today. We do think that a lot of the volatility was the Fed having to kind of adjust course, right? We mm -hmm. It needs to normalize rates. And if inflation is really um, ratcheting up, then the Fed has come out and said, we're going to have to raise rates. Does, yeah. does some sort of worldwide uncertainty now have them kind of scale back how aggressive they may have been that could happen and maybe yeah. the market sees that as you know the the light um, right but that would be short term too i think yes yeah that that would would definitely be the case if it certainly makes it way more difficult for the Federal Reserve at this point to, to now try to figure out what their policy is going to look like come March. Um, this adds a, another wrinkle that I, I'm sure they were not necessarily thinking about, but it is, um, if anything, it may, it may delay 
some of the aggressiveness on the front end that I think was 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 probably going to happen to, to really try to start to tame inflation. Um, it's it's not going to stop it. It's not going to delay it indefinitely. It it really is, you know, a few months down the road. At the end of the day, yeah. All all of this again, putting putting this conflict kind of in a box. It should should not have the contagion to spread across all financial markets. Yeah, I'm thinking like the global financial crisis, 2008, 2009 was a completely different scenario right. than we are than we are dealing with right now. So, at the end of the day, it really is how how will the U.S. markets and how will the U.S. economy be affected? It could be affected, right? If if energy prices continue to rise, we're all going to feel that in some way, shape, or form. Businesses no are going to feel that margins may be no doubt, <laughs> but no doubt. GDP is GDP is still heading in the right direction. Inflation is still high. That still needs to be dealt with um, on our shores. So while it, it it may change that course a little bit for the Federal Reserve, it doesn't completely you know derail us. It, it's still going to happen. It's just a matter of I, I like everything. How long? What does that runway now look like? Right. Um, and hopefully getting getting to the other side of this conflict will give the Fed kind of their uh, a clear path to now just deal with, I, I don't want to say the tangibles, but you know, the, the things that are under their purview. It's very hard to set policy based off of what another country is doing. When right. you can't control that, you don't know how the market's going to react um, moving forward. I feel like that's it's got to be the moral of the story. You know, we we know that as long term investors, we have to work our way through short term volatility and short term is mm -hmm. relative, right? Who knows? Oh, sure. The do the dominoes of of this type of conflict and you know where it can lead, but we're long term investors and we know the market is more forward looking than we tend to be, right? right. So the the market felt a heck of a lot better about COVID than we did as human beings still going through shutdowns and isolation, yeah. you know, pre-vaccines, all of that, Yes, right? Yes. The, the market was very forward-looking to all of that. Um, and yeah. that can happen again here. So we don't want anybody to get on the wrong side of this because it feels bad right now. It's not great. Right. Um, yeah. But, you know, got to hang in there. Yes, that was well said. Um, yeah, don't don't let the the short term volatility change your long term plan. You got it. All right, thanks for your insights as always. Thank you. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Hey everyone, Adam and I really appreciate you tuning in. Please note that the opinions we voiced in the show are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be most appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, your accountant, and financial advisor or tax advisor prior to making any decisions or investing. Thanks for listening.